This is my new laptop, and I made it. Well, sort of. It looks a lot like a modern 2-in-1 laptop, but this isn't actually a computer. This device is completely powered by my phone. There is no computer here. It uses the phone's processor, memory, and storage to run with the help of a few components I've secured at the back. To show you how it works, I plug my phone into my device and connect the keyboard. I then stream a Windows device via my 4G connection on the phone. My phone acts as my touchpad, letting me navigate through Android or Windows. I can use this for web browsing, word processing, and other day-to-day -day tasks, and I'm going to show you how to do it. But first of all, a bit of background. Today's modern phones have more than enough processing power for day-to-day -day tasks, but due to their compact size, they become impractical for any extended productivity work. Companies like Razer and Samsung have dabbled with the idea of running a computer off a phone, but these solutions are expensive and are restricted to only phones from their companies. In my version, this should be able to run off any USB-C equipped Android phone. In this case, I'm using my own Google Pixel 2 XL. On top of the phone, I need a few more things. Firstly, I need an external USB monitor. There are quite a few USB monitors available online, but the monitor itself must support the DisplayLink protocol. This is a rather obscure protocol that Google insists on using, but think of it like a driver that is compatible with Android. So for this, I chose this Asus monitor. Additionally, I needed a USB-C hub that provides at least one USB 3 port and pass-through charging. Plugging the monitor directly to my phone results in no signal, but that's because the USB port on the phone won't output enough power to run the monitor, even if I use an adapter. This is why we need a USB hub that allows for pass-through charging. Now we can power the monitor using the hub and a connected AC adapter. Obviously, this isn't much use as a portable device, which is why the last thing we need is a portable battery bank to power the device and a keyboard. You will also have to install the Display Link app for Android for all this to work, which is available on the Google Play Store. Now, once we plug everything in, and you can see that my phone screen is cast onto the monitor. At this point, you can install any number of apps that emulate the desktop experience on a phone, but for me, this wasn't enough. I didn't want some sort of oversized Android device. I wanted something that could be much more productive, and that meant running Windows. The easiest way to get the Windows experience on a phone is through a remote desktop application. This allows me to access my home computer via the internet and control it. I use Google Remote Control Desktop. This works surprisingly well through the 4G connection on my phone and lets me do almost anything my home computer can do remotely. So how does using this compare to using a conventional laptop or tablet? Well, I've been using this as my computer both at home and at uni for the last few weeks, and it has really surprised me with how well it works. It has a battery life of around eight hours, but keep in mind during this period, it does deplete the phone's battery as well as the battery packs. There is some latency associated with using a remote desktop, but it isn't as bad as I expected. The 4G connection is actually pretty fast, and a lot of the time I don't notice the delay. Another advantage is when I open something on this device, it stays open on my home computer. This makes it much easier for me to pick up straight where I left off, even if I change devices over. While this is an imperfect solution, it is more than good enough for use as my daily university device. But the real question is, can it run Skyrim?